February <laughs> 2018. Park Board meeting to order. First item is our minutes from our last meeting. Does anyone have any changes, corrections, or omissions to anything that they saw? Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Anybody have anything? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. The first item we have up is the pickleball courts. Um, <coughs> there's a number of representatives here from the, from the pickleball, uh, for lack of better distinction, association um, that's forming or coalescing to, to try and help bring pickleball further. Um, I think it would benefit both the park board and the, the, the members to get a, a better understanding of the governmental process of how we have to go through what steps to do things. And then, um, is, is Brady coming up from downstairs? Brenda. Brenda, uh, Brenda I mean? Yep. Oh, there she is. Oh, next to Buck. <laughs> Sorry, and, and Brenda's here from City Finance to also help explain how dollars get allocated, where we go in our budgetary process, and then within that timing of how things have to happen in order for that all to, to flow and, and come about. Um, I think the, the park board needs to, to start with a, a, a vision, if you will, or, or a definition of what our vision for pickleball courts are in the in the parks. What kind of facility, if you will, do we are we looking at, and and then how that aligns with what the association would like to do, and then how do we bring those two things into alignment so that everybody wins? If that's the goal, right, for all of us is to is to make a, have a good facility come about that brings you know joy happiness activity and everything else in, into the parks it's a positive thing um, that we're trying to do mm -hmm. so with that being said do you want to run through the <coughs> the our, our we can probably run uh, yeah why run not you? through better than yeah good evening <coughs> Um, what I'm here to address is uh, kind of two documents that the city uses uh, to identify projects. And the one the park board will be familiar with, which is the, the park, uh, park and Recreation Plan. And it was last updated uh, in 2015. And so it would be my suggestion uh, that the park board would move forward with updating this plan because this plan uh, then feeds into our five-year capital improvement plan for the city. Um, what you would note if you looked at this plan that was last done in 2015 is there are some items uh, on here that uh, didn't make it to the five-year capital improvement plan just because we have limited resources at the city. Uh, you know, this is the park board plan, but uh, this is for the entire city. So here uh, there's competition for improving streets, buying dump trucks, things like that. Um, so it would be my recommendation that the park board would you know, move forward updating this plan because the last time it was done was 2015. Uh, work on that this summer because the city will start working on the five-year capital improvement plan. The five-year capital improvement plan, uh, we focus on the first two years of that plan every other year when we update it, uh, and that's what we base our bonding on. So year three and four and five, uh, we look at it, but not in as much detail, because year one and two, we have to make sure that we can get it into our levy for our citizens. And so that would be my recommendation on that. Uh, the uh, funding for these projects, it's bonding, but also it is your, uh, the park improvement fees. Uh, we have park improvement fees here at the city of Hudson. Uh, we don't have impact fees. Uh, park, in, uh, park dedication fees, excuse me, uh, have some requirements uh, at the state that they can only be used on uh, initial acquisition of land and initial uh, park improvements. We've interpreted that to be 
is it part of that original master plan for that park? And so that's where we, for funding, if it's bonding or park dedication fees. Clarification on that. Is it, is it the overall master plan to the park when we master plan the park, or is that a fluid thing that, and for example, when Grandview Park was designed and laid out, pickleball wasn't invented, so we sure. couldn't have thought about adding it. And that would be something that we would have to get some legal counsel on because it, it would be interpretation of state statute. So okay. in the past, uh, for example, with Grandview, uh, things that were in that master plan, I can look back and say, well, park dedication fees paid for that. But if it was, uh, for example, most recently uh, with the dog park that went at Grandview, that wasn't part of the master plan, nor was that paid for with park dedication fees. And they paid um, the fees for that. Yeah. They, yep, they donated the money for mm -hmm. that. And so that's what our past practice has been. I'm not sure about going forward. Mm -hmm. it, it is up for interpretation. Do you know, uh, do any of the parks have it in their master plan as far as pickleball courts or any of the newer parks or? No. Okay. Great. Okay, does it? Okay. I thought we did anyway, Kim. Yeah. No, that's not in the master plan. Oh, it's, 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 it's not in the park's in the, master plan. Yeah, it's in, in our five, in our five year plan. It's in the five Excuse year. Me. Okay. And that's the only way plans. to tap into the dedicated. <coughs> Park dedicated fund. It, like I said, it's up for interpretation. Okay. So we'd have to get legal advice on that. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, the the park dedication fees, um, it's a limited supply of money. Um, and when we look at the map, when we've looked at it internally as staff, there are uh, projects um, in this five year plan that are in that original map of that park that we do not have enough dedication fees to pay for yet. Okay. So that would be, you know, some thought process. Since there's <coughs> not enough park dedication fees to pay for what was in the original map and plan, are we going to redo the map? But that is up for your discussion mm -hmm. as we review it. Mm -hmm. So you um, the only way to really move forward is what you're saying with even looking at the pickleball courts is first to have that thing updated to be able to try and find funding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because definitely for 2018, um, <clears throat> we have done the bonding for 2017 and 2018. The city issued bonds uh, last spring, last summer. Um, and so that funding has been dedicated to, to other resources. And so and it, it wasn't in the five year or the two year bonding cycle. So then we're going, you know, we're, we're changing the five year capital improvement plan okay. for 2018. If we would look for pickleball courts in 18. Okay. So it'd be my suggestion to look, you know, at 19 or further. Okay. So the other option would be private fund, like the dot when the dog track or dog park went in, mm -hmm. the funds that were, were they put bore together for the, that yeah. came outside of. Out of city, it wasn't city funding. It was just on, on city property. And okay. as as Tom can recall, with that, um, the the funding that they were successful with is what they built. There was the the small fencing and the large fencing, and and we just built part of it at at this point with mm -hmm. that. Tom, you have anything that you want to? No, I guess they covered, you know, the uh, financial <coughs> part of it. The recommendation would be to update the five-year rec plan and include pickleball courts um, in that at probably the two locations, Grandview and Wycamp as the two current ones, or would it be in all parks or just the two that are identified in some of our meetings with the pickleball people? I think we, sh I think we should include them at Burton. I think, you know, um, we should look at, at any activities that are, are now sports or activities that are taking place that weren't in the five-year plan before and take a, a serious look at, at each of the parks and say, what else can it be so that we don't get out of step with 
with that, being able to do it. Pam, did you have a? No, I was thinking that too. If we if we take a look at the parks and what makes sense or what what's go going to get the most use in that park, mm -hmm. and what what do we focus on? So if, if it's it, pickle pickleball and white camp, and we've got ice skating at one of our park, you know, mm -hmm. and and really do some analysis of what makes the most sense to incorporate into those parks when we do that review. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have? Hearing what you've just heard with us take place, please, I'd like to get some feedback from the association. If you'd be kind enough to come to the, the podium and your name and where you live would be great for the people at home, please. I'm Michael Lammer, I'm counsel for the Hudson Community Pickleball Association. My home happens to be Baldwin. Mm -hmm. I'm the USAPA ambassador for Hudson and River Falls. I've worked with several communities to, uh, for them to convert tennis courts into pickleball courts, or like we did in Eau Claire, uh, start from scratch with uh, 12 pickleball courts. So my role is, for Hudson is uh, information and guidance of how to get uh, through, through the process and uh, to give them the materials they need from a city engineer to perspective, et cetera, and also counsel of how to be an alliance, the articles for an alliance, and also if we needed to be a, a 510C for uh, receive money from certain foundations because we realize, uh, at least in River Falls, we'd have to contribute funding. Other cities or towns do the entire project by themselves, but then again, they have recreation departments and different budgets. One of the questions I have is that I, I only heard, and correct me if, if I'm hearing's off, I heard talk about bonds, I heard talk about park dedication fees, but the third so source, impact fees, did you discuss that and what role that plays in development if they would choose to put pickleball courts in play? Um, currently, the city of Hudson doesn't have impact fees. We have park dedication fees, um, and so we, we don't have that funding mechanism uh, for parks at this point. So in light of that, that's different. What I wanted to submit to the board was a recommendation based on, I just received new bids of what the eight courts would cost based on an er early information applied to, I believe, perhaps park board subcommittee. So I wanna leave that for on record, though I, I would, as an attorney after listening today, I would, of course, amend my position, but it has a diagram of what we believe that would work best at Grandview and there's a bid from a company that would come in and do the whole project for about $116,000. So I'll leave these copies. You want to address, uh, excuse me. Um, I think we, we should, as a city, we should address how we handle when, when the city does a project, our engineers have to review whatever Years was done, and then the city has to put everything out. Keep copies of, puts everything out for bid through yes. their process. This is beneficial in terms of helping us or everyone get it, their minds around what we're looking at for overall dollars. I would just caution you not to waste people's time doing concrete bids on things when the likelihood of it ever going to them is. Slimmer Correct. nil, unless you guys are doing the funding for the whole project. Yes, you understand. If it's City Avenue, that that's where we're handcuffed as to how things. This can get understanding done. of the of that quote, and I cautioned uh, Upper and Midwest Athletic Construction Company. This this was an estimate that, as council, I was saying we're not going to hold you these figures. Good. Everything must go out in a 60-day bid. You will be bidding with a, a public agency. Okay. They fully understand that. But you can't talk, well, we can budget for eight courts or six courts unless you have a general idea before it goes Absolutely. out. And we understand engineering is between anywhere between three to eight thousand dollars to send it out to get it up to spec the design so we could give it to the public. Right. What I've learned dealing with eight different communities that if you don't show them a ballpark figure and say for example, in the event that it was one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars and we've got a, somebody will now paint do the paint and striping of those courts, 
rather than 20,000 at bid for 13,000, and they'll give us a gift of 10,000 uh, as part of their contribution. So you've already saved 10,000. If that doesn't come up and you're in a meeting and you say, look, as a city, we need to come up with 75,000 and HCPA and Hudson YMCA is gonna come up with 45, you'll never cross the road. So that's the purpose of us to inform to give you a data point Fantastic. or to help make your decision. Fantastic. Because that's exactly what needs to be done in order to go. Once we have our five-year plan done and have it earmarked for that. Yes, and we were fully understood after last week's meeting that uh, pickleball was not in, in the master plan or the five-year plan and that you'd have to make a motion to amend to, to the, at least conceive of the concept. Mm -hmm. We, of course, realize that's not binding. It's just the idea, let's get moving on the concept so we can juggle all the different competing parties to a major asset. Having heard that, park board members, do you, is there a motion? Do you have comment? What are your, your thoughts? Do you feel that your association has the capabilities of financing <coughs> or getting enough funding to uh, do the entire project? Okay, now I'm counsel, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. I'm a lawyer, so I'm like, well, let me think about this. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have a chairperson here, but most communities I've dealt with have paid 100% of the bill, except for old clerics. We added an additional 12 courts, and we ended up raising $88,000 of the $160,000 bill, which is unusual. Most cities slash communities look for about a third of a contribution from an association and most of the community like Waukesha, et cetera, you're dealing with 100,000 people versus Hudson is what? 14. 14. Mm -hmm. So I, I do anticipate, uh, that's why it's important that we have an alliance with Hudson YMCA because they would be a major contributor to that. But yes, I, I do believe we could raise thirty-five to $40,000. And if the project comes in at $106,000, we're looking really good. I know we did, you know, I think uh, at the public works meeting I was in that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the city engineer came up with a co rough cost of, his estimate was closer to 160,000. Yes, he took the standard protocol that we do at USAPA and also the, one of the largest website for products called Pickleball Center, usually do a standard estimation of 15 to 20,000, so we took basically eight quarts times 20. That's why I went out and get you hard figures to yeah. give a better interpretation. Nothing against Tom, but he had not had the opportunity to measure the specs and go out and think about grading and feel. But that is a much closer estimate of what it would cost Hudson. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, I guess, at this time. Can we change the five-year plan without it being on an agenda item? We can just do I it, can, can we not? I mean, we don't. Well, it's the outdoor rec plan, so I guess yeah. we'll probably just go through the same process and update it and bring it back for okay. approval and then bring it to city council for approval. I also, based on the meeting that I attended with Tom, um, the reason why I did a letter format versus the original <coughs> proposal, they asked us, well, think larger in scope. Where should we be in five years? Will you need more than eight courts? And typically the answer is yes, you will. And so I added the addition of four courts, and then with the help of the uh, Upper Midwest Athletic Construction and the Google and the Gradients, we realized we could add four more courts right to the eight courts on a two-by-two two scheme. So we could end up with 12 courts on one facility north. Uh, well, you and I walked it. Right yeah. there, they'll fit. So mm -hmm. if you're taking a slope gradient into tree line and putting up 12 courts two, two years after the event, and then t under your suggestion as well, I added the third option in 2020 or 2021, adding mm -hmm. lights. And so I showed you a light diagram typical of such a project. I do not have cost for that, but the idea should have been explored. Do you feel that you said with the funds or the monies that you have obtained or possibly can obtain, 
that if you downsize from eight, now you just want to 12, but I mean, say if you downsize from eight to four or two with your current funding sources, if you people want to move forward with something other than waiting for the 2019, and that's only a gamble. You know, that's a, that would be a request for, but you're in, you know, because that request is in competition with our street program, our city equipment funds and things like that. Um, it's very possible you would get it, but it's, you're in, just so you know, it's not a guarantee. So if you're in a position where you wanted to see some action this year, please correct me if I'm wrong, but okay. if, the, if the city or the park board would make a recommendation to include pickle balls at Grandview Park and change the outdoor rec plan, which I don't see a big hurdle, yeah. personally, um, if, if the pickleball people wanted to uh, get something this summer, it would have to be on your dime. But I guess I don't see that after asking you if you can collect, uh, you know, or acquire 116,000, can you acquire half of that for two, you know, or whatever, two or four? I think the position would be, who wants to talk? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm just throwing options. Uh, I know you guys are pretty anxious and to get something going otherwise it's going to be a couple years yeah i'm deanne de graf and i've been a resident of hudson since 1976 um, and we have already i am in the process of finalizing the spark grant i know that's not a large grant it's five thousand um, dollars we've spoken with the people in charge of that it looks pretty likely that we would get that grant i've also met with the hudson hospital foundation with Carrie Ramble, and um, we would be submitting that grant around Labor Day, and we it's pretty good likelihood that we would also be getting that grant. I have no idea. They did give $30,000 to the Y in the past, and if we can secure that partnership with the Y, I think we would have a pretty good chance of getting that grant. So we have two of them that we're pretty close to saying that yes, we have those, we can use those. Um, we've been brainstorming donors. Um, we have several that have already committed, <coughs> not to an amount, but they're waiting for us to say we're going forward with it. Um, in talking with Carrie Ramble, we understand that if we come forward to you with guaranteed money, it's going to make a difference and possibly we'll move it quicker. Um, probably not this year. Uh, we'd love to have it this year, but we <laughs> mm -hmm. understand that the, the COGS just don't go very fast in, in the city government, and um, we've learned that since we started in the fall. So, you know, we're, we're willing to put as much into it as we can. We're willing to fundraise. We've already got the motion, the procedure in, in process, and flyers are getting ready. We just need to know that we have partnerships, and we see it as a, a very strong partnership if we can have the city and the why with us to promote the health and wellness of your senior citizens as well as the uh, people that have challenge, physical challenges. And we are committed to that because we feel that's a very strong population that needs that opportunity. They have a, a league at the uh, Ball Diamonds on Sundays and we can see ourselves piggybacking on that. Uh, we already have the names of the contacts for that and we're going to go forward with it because we believe that. We believe this is an excellent activity for all kinds of people. With that being said, I think it would expedite things, even though we haven't, <clears throat> we are going to do our five-year plan and do that in a, in a separate meeting, but a resolution to, to change that to allow pickleball now would get us back in stride with where we need to be, would it not? Mm -hmm. There's a big question mark hanging there. Question mark, um, what would be the reason for the, the amendment? Because we wouldn't have funding, though, until next year. No, but it allows, wasn't it said that that would allow us then to move forward, that it be a, a approved activity to be taking place in the park? With them trying to fundraise, I think. Yeah. So with, with a tie to fundraising. Yes. Not to, okay. 
Sure. So now yes. it, it would be an, it's an officially approved activity to take place within the park, and it's not held up for us to do our five-year plan. Because if we don't get our five-year plan done until June, we don't want it to hold up that moving forward. Make sense? Yeah. Um, one question for Deanne again. Um, I know the Spark Grant um, seems like we had a young girl do a project in a park, and she had that grant and I think there's is there time limits where it has to be uh, completed in 2018 for the the spark grant yeah. I don't think we actually get the grant until our project is completed and I, I my understanding okay. yeah so they would hold that money for okay. us so it wouldn't necessarily have to be done to this year or it could be or correct the monies would be available this year or whenever the project's done whenever the project is done because they want proof that we followed through and completed our our end of it so mike you said two courts how much oh you asked me that <laughs> question my recommendation is that i would tell the board not to build two courts because what will happen is happen at every place across the country they're going to have uh, a lot of citizens unhappy because they can't play and they have to wait a half an hour. Um, the Y wants me to continue to teach pickleball cl classes. I teach on four courts. You reduce me to two, you, you, you cut half their revenue. Those courts are designed, that design is set up for wheelchair, athletic wheelchair events. We're always working to look for our, um, what is the correct? Physically challenged youth classes to do it. Pickleball is a natural for them. We also have, I call them active teenagers at the Y. Uh, they have lots of energy, they get in trouble. We're looking for programs to do that. So two courts produces a lot of stress and I'll, I'll guarantee you, based on past performance and from our headquarters in Florida, you end up with a lot of angry people. Shawnee has six courts. And they're upset because they have to wait 30 minutes because you get 60 to 80 people playing on six courts. Uh, it produces uh, not a good atmosphere. Minimum courts is four, but four doesn't work for the amount of interest. We had two hundred. how many people signed our petition? Two, 215. Two, 215, that's what you're looking at. Put 215 people, yeah, mm -hmm. on four courts. Won't have, you, it's just a thought. Yep, I guess no. I'm a guy that well, takes well, what I can get and... <laughs> well, I would be, but then I'm an old trial lawyer. I want the most. <laughs> <laughs> However, having said that, we've been discussing, we realize that there's a lot of protocol and procedures we're not aware of and how different things work, even though I've been researching the code of 254 and 250 to find out sources of income. What are, probably our best course of action, honestly, would be that if it, there's no way to move forward in 2018, we will find courts to stripe and play on and use temporary nets for the 2018 summer because we'll look forward to 2019. We just know, as I think Deanne spoke so well, we need to know what the partnership is because when we go out asking people start donating, I mean, I get 100 people to donate $250, we're at $25,000. I can't say that if they're going, by the way, the city may be able to know in 2019. I have, have some idea the concept is viable in order to go out and represent, and I certainly don't want to set us up as a 510C and deal with federal laws, trying to have to give money back because the project failed. So, great point. I would recommend that we not follow it. So could we move to approve I don't four? think there's really I mean, this four courts is what, is just what you would start with? No. Eight, on this eight courts? Eight 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 eight. It's just an update on it. Do we need, yeah. we need to come back? I Do we need anything, a resolution or anything to? I think this, according to the agenda, was just, you know, discussion, and we, okay. it wasn't just for open discussion, not any action at this time, so. But could we take action? I mean, could we make a? I don't think so. Oh. No. Oh. Mm. No possible action. And I just want to clarify, um, if you do update uh, the, the rec plan uh, just for the pickleball court, courts, that's not committing the city to any future funding 
of that. Remember, the park plan goes into the capital improvement plan, and it's up against you know, other projects. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that. Okay. We could certainly put it on the next agenda and say that we're going to update mm -hmm. the yeah. park plan for next mm -hmm. <coughs> park board meeting. Okay. You didn't have it in there, though. I think that okay. would be the... Well, I, you know, the benefit of having that is for their grants yep. as well, you know, so... To get it in. So if we had that by next month, is is that would that be okay for some of your grants? They're not even the grants that they're applying for probably don't even yes, require. Fine. You're fine with that? It yes. it doesn't hamstring you. Yeah. Okay, then that's what we'll do. So it's clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to how we're going to progress here. I I also just wanted to have clarification after Brenda said that, mm -hmm. in saying that there may be no funds, can it also mean that there possibly may be funds? Or are we looking at, we will take on the total respons financial responsibility of it? I don't know if we're at that point of, of being able to give you clarity on that. Okay, so it's not a no. Well, I don't know yes. what, other, what other projects are, are coming due okay. for, for funding at that time and, and what the city's looking at for, their, for that time period. So we should go for the touchdown, mm -hmm. and you may come in with an extra point, oh. possibly. <laughs> I mean, if we're looking, we'll go for the big amount, and then if you can, you'll help us out if there's anything there after the projects are done. And we've got the land. And you have the land, right, and that's a big piece. Plus mm -hmm. the liability, because we've yeah. spoken with Tom about that, and that's yeah. a very big piece, too, mm -hmm. that we would not want to do on our own. So... But that's, that's something important. else that we have to, the city has to decide is that, in fact, you know, we're going to accept a donation possibly from the association. But you have to realize that when you donate that, that actually is the same as a dog park. That's just part of our park system at that point. Right. And then we have to adjust our operating budget for whatever maintenance and every five years or whatever needs to be relined and restriped. So the city council and you know has to uh, know that if we accept that donation, it's it's going to down the road. It's going to be not even down the road. Uh, there's going to be uh, maintenance fees and costs associated with general park activities. It's going to increase. Right. So. Yeah, we understand that. Yeah. And we're hoping to be a participant in that too, as we do tournaments and so that an annual basis, we would have an amount of money that would help with that maintenance. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. But thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One, thank one more question on that. Sure. I'm uh, Dave Morrison, I'm part of the group with the pickleball. And um, just following up on Deanne's question, uh, that there may be money or there may not be money, can, can you get, uh, give us an idea at maybe at what juncture that we could know uh, for budget purposes, how much money we would have to do and how much you would have to do. Because uh, the question was, are you able to commit to money at this point? No. But um, how would that part work? How would we know at what point or is there a point? I'm just thinking of fundraising. When I go out to fundraise, <coughs> you know, we, we need mm -hmm. to accomplish this amount to do the project. I don't know the answer to that. I am going to guess or, or suspect well, we must know our park fees. Yeah, well, well I know, Brenda, I mean, would be able to. And, you know, we're splitting the freeway. Uh, one side uses one pot of money, the other side uses the other pot of money. And I'm assuming we can project what we'll probably receive in park fees at some point. I mean, we're not, I don't think we're talking bonding issues here. I think we're talking park fees. That would be up mm -hmm. to This is a passive use, I believe, yeah. of park fees. We would need to get legal counsel on that for an opinion. Well, so would you like me to get legal counsel I, I before next meeting about the use of park dedication fees? Mm -hmm. Yes. That, is yes. Good. that would be no. really helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. In both parks? In Yes. In, that would give us overall clarity as to what, okay. Okay. what can be done. All right. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> the other thing I'd like to see in the five-year plan is where the park fees, what they're dedicated to now in our, in our KIP. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Okay. So we can plan and prioritize. Are you done? Did you put that on the agenda for next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Well, that's what part of 
the five new is, is that's what Brenda was talking about earlier was the master plan. So for Grandview, it shows ball fields, it shows bathrooms, right. it shows tennis mm -hmm. courts, it shows all that. So um, it'd be a matter of prioritizing if, because obviously there's only seventy thousand dollars or whatever right. it is right now. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do bathrooms out there, you know what's going to come first, bathrooms or something else. Yeah. So that's I don't know that next month is you know I mean if to cram all this into next month I don't know that that's going to be that doable. But do our best. Hearing that, that's what we look at it at at trying to get our arms on the city side around all the other issues. Um, I don't think there'll be any clarity until sometime this summer, in all honesty, early, sp late spring, early summer, before, with everything coming at the city right now and city staff, that has to be, the same staff is, is dealing with all the developmental pressure that's coming to the city for projects stacked up from the, the dog track redoing lakefront to other properties that are petitioning the city to want to come forward and then this. Um, I just know where, to, I just, I don't think we're going to have that clarity until that far down the trail. But then we'd be able to, to say looking at our future, yeah, here's what we can, can likely do and, and how that can come about. And I, I think you're hearing enough support on the, the part of the park board that we want to see the, the project go forward, that we're, we're trying to go forward in, in, in accomplishment rather than obstruction, if, if I'm clear, I mean, if I'm speaking for everyone in that, um, in that vein. So I think we can accomplish it when we know more. Is that a sufficient answer? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hearing that, we'll move on to, to the next item on our, our agenda, which was um, oh, our park user fees. In the packet, it had what <coughs> our current fees are. It's been recommended by staff. Tom, you want to go through your fee um. recommendations? The issue sheet indicated that indicates that uh, we it's broken down into different parks, Grandview, Burton Park. Um, overall, uh, staff recommends to uh, keep those parks user fees um, to the current ones that are um, 2017 mm -hmm. um, Lakefront Banshell. Um, a lot of times it's for nonprofit. There's, you know, it's been reserved 22 times. A lot of city organized events, concerts, and things uh, to recommend to use. Keep that the same for 2018. Uh, the boat launch uh, is the boat launch is based off of uh, state park entry fees. Currently, it's eight dollars for residents and uh, twelve dollars for non-residents. Um, and that's currently where we're at right now, I believe, 12 and 8. Oh, I wish we could fight that. Uh, so we're at, we're at the high, high end right now with the, the current boat launch. Um, last year we did collect, and it was a fairly good year with um, the water not being super high all year, but it was a $52,410. Um, season passes last year were 10300 Sailboat mooring annual fee has... That's a separate line item, sorry. <laughs> so I guess, I'm sorry. Oh, that's a different one? It. So if you wanted to do the park fees and make motion on that. Okay, and do the so I want... Okay. Sorry. So park fees, uh, um, for the fees, uh, fees we would, um, just staff would be recommend that we keep the fees at the current rate. Motion. motion. I'll second it, and then I have a question. Go ahead. So the fees are maybe you can share with everyone what those fees go to, or for the audi television audience too, what what those fees go go to. <coughs> um, staff, 
staff. It just um, goes into the general park fund. Um, uh, supplies. Where it goes. Um, when the fields are being, you know, ball fields, uh, Burton Field, you know, there's prep work and mowing and things like that. Um, there were some of the reservations uh, for the different parks would be for, you know, keep it as clean as possible and uh, just general maintenance uh, of the buildings, some of the supplies. Some of the repairs. Repairs. Mm -hmm. okay. So on the boat launch, those, the, the parking, or let's talk about the parking or when mm -hmm. folks don't, a pass isn't required, right? Folks can come we in. Wait until we get through the boat launch. Oh, okay. That'll be a separate. Oh, that's sorry. just separate. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Sorry. So that's the next item. Okay. So if we moved and seconded so you did, yeah. to keep our, our park user fees the same as they were in 2017. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carried. Now we can go to boat now launch. Now we can go oh, to the boat launch fees. Boat launch fees, which I guess I started and, uh, you know, again, that's based off of the state park um, fees, um, which are $8 and $12. Um, and that's what our current rates are. And then we went to uh, about the parking. Is it, were you talking about those 10 spaces that we used to have or for city resident parking? Because when they went to a season pass uh, mm -hmm. system, we couldn't. They wouldn't let us do both. You can't do both. Okay. So they either have one or the other. So, so we chose to give the, the residents the break for the people that have a, a season pass, the heavy users, that way and and to do it. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to leave our, our daily fees the same at the boat launch? I'll make a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next will be our, our sailboat mooring fee. I have uh, received uh, some inquiries from how we establish the fees for this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was not here, you know, when the original um, fees were started back in 1979. Um, I know we talked a lot about back then, there was a talk about Well, they, est they established a park improvement fee in 1992, and that was when it began. This so this person generally talked about, you know, what is entailed in the park improvement plan. He just wanted to make sure that um, we were aware of uh, the clause. I think it's called the taking clause in the Fifth Amendment. Uh, equal protection under the law uh, and then make sure that we have actual costs for the mooring field. Uh, we used to itemize thing. We do itemize you know specific um, items that we purchase. Uh, we don't have a line item for hours and I don't think the police document that's part of the um, mooring fee was police protection. I don't think they monitor or they document every trip that they go down the dike road. Um, I don't think we've ever asked them to have to do that. And no. I don't think we'd have to justify to that extent. Um, Article 9 of the, the Wisconsin Constitution was another thing. So I don't know if uh, I'd have to go and research this or talk to the city attorney about some of these questions that he asked. Uh, I do have a, Brenda did supply us with um, different expenditures over the years um, for parks. Um, for, you know, goes from, you know, decal, uh, excuse me, uh, buoys, um, stairway improvements, $2,000, um, 
posts and chains for that was close to a little over seven thousand dollars where we currently have our the issue with the uh, dinghies that were all over the place and we made these specific spots for them a few years ago so we have invested in those fees in park improvements uh, a couple years ago at the main road uh, was it was about nineteen thousand dollars. We improved some of the cracks so people could walk out there. Brenda, did we have our city attorney fees allocated to that when we were going through all the stuff with the dinghies and and trying to bring all that in order? I don't know the answer to that question. I can certainly check. Do you recall, Debbie? I don't think we allocated it to specifically the moorings. Yeah. It no. just came out of general, out of general park one, yeah. and. Uh, legal yeah it's a good deal um, like I said he he I just agree. questioned the you know how we come up with our fees and what do we base them on and if those fees are directly related to the benefit of those specific people using more using the mooring field how much do we get a year in mooring fees well there's 49 49 times oh, okay 49 times 560 okay so what does a, what's a mooring fee in a neighboring community how do we compare with other yeah. mooring fees I think we should just we've had do a that, survey of what yeah. market rates are and yeah the river we've had we have that information somewhere we've done it we can over and over charge know. according I mean, if we did when we did that it, it's a much those. higher number yeah much that higher. might be helpful as we're having this kind of discussion about how our fee Especially when they were talking about if it's directly impacting, like down the road, of, as part of the vision study. If all of a sudden we improve that whole area, well, that's going to directly benefit them. We have to pay for that somehow. We just spent fifty-six thousand dollars to do that. So you know, City so is. I guess that could impact the fee down the road. Yeah. I, I just I'm just bringing this to you from you know the a phone call that I got this after late this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, if you feel comfortable with the current uh, rate or, or or and want to move forward with that that's fine otherwise I don't know if it's worth uh, speaking with the council on it or Good council morning. or I should legal mm -hmm. the applications are due on March 1st so if you postpone it we'd probably have to have a special meeting if you want to change a fee um, or move forward with it and then we could speak with the attorney and if there's any red flags mm -hmm. yeah. I mean this is the way it's been for many years uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know I believe I don't believe it's been challenged in all those years are you recommending that we stay at the same price mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, I I get this time until we right now we're working through our waterfront vision plan and maybe if that anything from that plan gets adopted that would do some improvement for the mooring field and act better access maybe at that time where there was a direct you know really a direct uh, benefit just for the specifically for the mooring people then maybe there some might be some discussion at that point okay what's the anticipated completion date of that study uh, I don't sometime this year yet I mean is when they're gonna make their final recommendations and then it would be Funding. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do I see any uh, things this year? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So we could move forward. We could with move this forward, leaving it as is. Mm -hmm. So I'll move to approve the current the current fee. Okay. Second. Se second. Moved and seconded to leave the fees where they are. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. And if we could maybe get those numbers from other communities so if we have this dis discussion again we know what that that looks like mm -hmm. yeah, White Bear should have them City of St. Paul would have them for Como and, and we won't be dealing with this till next year anyways yeah. right yeah. I wonder, oh, Dennis. I wonder if I can clarify something please My name is Dennis Kroll, and I'm the uh, chair of the Mooring Association, and we, we have, uh, uh, well, 50 moorings, 49, and 
that means there's at least twice that many people that are involved and that there's a <coughs> good crowd and we, we bring a bunch of um, guests every year um, to Hudson and, uh, and it's well used, I think, as you know. Um, I, I, my, what I wanted to point out is that there, the distinction here is that the park improvement fee was added to the top of the whole thing about uh, maybe 11, 12 years ago. Uh, maybe 2006, is that, does that sound right? Um, anyhow, and that, that is $230 um, to the top of what is the operations uh, budget. In that, the, there are some people that are, have been complaining that, and for years this has been going on, uh, but have been, we've been trying for since 2007, I think, to um, get better access, um, get some money spent on the access to the dinghies. Um, some people are having a hard time um, as, as they get older, um, <coughs> um, and it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit hazardous um, getting down to them. Uh, um, and I, I hear complaints all the time about that and people that have had accidents and uh, this sort of that. Um, <coughs> and um, it, so there's been an attempt to, and kind of an ongoing attempt to, to get uh, some kind of improvement to that access. Um, <clears throat> um, it has kind of got washed under the rug quite a few times for one reason or another, um, <clears throat> uh, technical reasons sometimes or whatever. But now, now there's um, this uh, waterfront improvement uh, uh, survey that's being done and, and I, I, we support that of course. Um, but getting back to the main, issue is that there's this half or this $230 every year that's taken out and it's for park improve the park improvement fund and um, some people <coughs> believe that if there's something taken out um, it's it's unfair taxation if it's not spent in some way directly related to that uh, to those uses like um, if you were giving, you were charging for pickleball courts, that, that money would, would be expected to be paid back or to, to improve those, those direct areas that are related to pickleball. Well, maybe. Um, and that doesn't happen in the, on, as far as moorings are, uh, are go. There's, uh, there's 11,000, I think, or is it nine or $11,000 that was spent a couple of years ago to put um, when we um, kind of regroup those dinghies into small areas and put uh, some chains uh, I think uh, it was to 19, secure them. Or excuse me, 2012, it was like $7,000. Seven? The other alternative is if we uh -huh. go to a market rate fee structure, mm -hmm. um, there, which would benefit the people of Hudson better. The, the market rate, there is, there is no market rate. Well, that's in Afton, gonna... it's eighty-five dollars. It used it used to be thirty-five dollars, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it is in uh, in uh, the the Madison area. It's something one hundred and sixty-five dollars, something like that. Yeah. Um, so if it's onerous from us doing it, we'll determine that. But, but for this point, year, it's going to stay what it's been. Well, the point is that the money that is actually taken out doesn't. You know, it's, it goes over the whole park system and not to anything that's specifically related to that area. Yeah. Outside of the, you know, the chains that were put up for security a couple years ago. How much is the bridge improvement? <clears throat> oh, a hun couple hundred thousand. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So over the next couple years when, when, I mean, there was money set aside for access in 2000, it's supposed to happen in 2017, I think, and then it got pushed off to 2019. And now I don't know what's gonna happen to it um, or if anything's ever gonna be done uh, uh, down there. They'll um, go through the same process that we've done every year. Yeah, I, 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 I- Put it out there, they'll make a decision whether to include it in the next bonding cycle. If they say yes, then we'll present it to the city council. The city council will make a decision whether they wanna include it in the bonds. In the bonding. And then partially with the finance director would say, we have X dollar amount to put towards that. And 
that would be their decision. The same process it's been every year. I think one of the other points that I want, I, I um, just related to your discussion was that that um, we talk about um, um, <coughs> paying for police protection. Well, peace, police protection is um, they pr protect people all. All, all the people that walk down the dike road. You know what, and maybe we should look at that um, because it's, but that was in place when we became part that's of the That's an airport. operations thing and not a... And um, the an, finance an, director could help go through that because that's where it was broken down through the finance department. Yeah. That's where we got it. Uh -huh. And, and we, it hasn't increased over since 2006 or whatever the year is. Yeah. So it stayed the same. Yeah. But it's a moot point now anyhow, that it's going to stay what it is for yeah, this yeah. year. Anyhow, good. I, I just wanted to bring those distinctions up. Okay. Thank so you. Do we need to look at the language that's in that document or the fees to or the, the that's associated with mooring and look at revising the language and how those funds are allocated? Maybe. Maybe. So they, they've just they um, designated that amount to be put towards a park improvement fee. They could change it, they could add to it, they could take it away, they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. It could all go back to the general fund. They've allowed it to stay in a fee, in a fund where it would go towards park improvements in that area. Mm -hmm. It's not specific. And is it that specific park that it needs to go it's into? Park. Yeah. It's all, okay. And it has been funded. Okay. The park. Had they ever looked at different uh, access to those things or? Mm -hmm. That's been a hot item for okay. many years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had different concepts and different ideas and uh, Seems like you get an idea and the cost kind of estimates and for some reason or another, uh, the council has opted not to go, go with it at that point. But we do, it, as part of the Vision Waterfront uh, plan, uh, the engineering firm met with private people, you know, they met with uh, public interest people like the sailboat people, the mooring people, the rowing people. Okay. Oh, the stakeholders. Uh, yeah. Stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So they are in the mix. Uh, you know, we've looked, seen some concept plans where they actually have some um, stairs and ramps and things to get access. Oh, good. Um, so we, we've tried working with the, the excursion boat and put dinghies on there. He even agreed that he, you know, if the DNR was okay with, you know, giving us a permit to extend one of those docks, put the dinghies on there. That wasn't uh, an option with, for the mooring people. They said it was too far, too far of, of rowing the boat. They still have the option of, instead of going down the rocks, um, going taking a row in not a rowboat, maybe some kind of a small fishing boat or something mm -hmm. from the boat launch if they care to do that. Um, I think, Dennis, there are a few people that are in the mooring field that actually have boats at the marina that can travel from the marina to their sailboat. They've done some of the people have that done that. Um, but we, we, it is included in the vision plan and um, there's a good possibility, you know, when that comes up, you know, that hopefully some funds would be available for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Next item is the update on the Lake Malaloo fishing improvements. Buck, are you here to oh. cover that? Thanks, Mr. Malik? My name is Buck Malik. I don't live in the city. I live at 413 Brooklyn <coughs> Drive in the town of Hudson. I asked Deb to give you some information on an application that we made um, <clears throat> for a DNR grant, and presumably you've seen that. Did that make it to your mm -hmm. packets? Yep. Yeah. At least a concept. Well, when we were working on it, it looked like it would be a 100% grant, and then we learned it would be a three to one match, and we didn't have the one in place. We'll hope to have the one in place uh, by next year's grant application deadline. Um, I'm sure the Lake Malaloo Association would contribute something and the St. Croix County Sportsman's Alliance will contribute something. And if we can uh, 
match the priorities of the, uh, of the Sportsman's Alliance for the so-called county aids, <coughs> we will be able to use the county money and the Sportsman's Alliance money. And so presumably you'll hear, hear more about that in the future. If you're going to update the uh, park plan uh, in any comprehensive fashion, <clears throat> it would be wonderful if you would include that southwest bay of Lake Malalu. It's mm -hmm. much underutilized. Mm -hmm. uh, people go there and fish, but um, it's a steep and rocky bank and, and not, not as attractive as it could be. The concept of those fishing piers would be the very same things that there are three of them in the Willow River State Park where again, there's a steep bank, um, and those, those piers have been wonderful. Uh, they're, they're monolithic concrete piers that aren't gonna go anywhere, and they're gonna last a long time, and um, we'd like to do the same thing there on the southwest bay of Lake Malibu. I, I noticed, uh, Mr. Casanova, that you spoke strongly to the planners who are working on the lakefront plan about going further south and all the way down to include that in their planning effort, mm -hmm. but it looked like it fell on deaf ears to me. Yeah. So. so if you're gonna... Um, but I think it'll be in our comprehensive plan on the part of the, the city to include it yeah, from that would be, Corky's that would be good. Pier all the way around there. Yeah, that, that would be good. Um, I had the question as you were talking about your plan, whether you, whether you can just up and keep amending little pieces onto it, uh, or whether you need to back up and get some professional help and, and um, do a thorough job when you do a five-year plan or do an update of a five-year plan. It's probably just one thing to say, well, we'll set aside a half an acre for a few pickleball courts, but uh, if, you're, if you're gonna do some other things, you maybe need to be a little bit more systematic about it, take public input, stuff like that. Thank you. Yeah, and the I next it's a topic. Great idea yeah, and I hope we we continue to pursue it for next year. Um, I know Buck uh, has worked hard with uh, even her, he's hosted a few ice fishing contests down in that area. Uh, I, I think it's in conjunction with the hot air fair, or maybe it's another activity. Um, but I know he's worked hard with uh, many things, along with very, being a very active member with the urban forestry and, and other mm -hmm. things. So thank you for all you do. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I've been conducting uh, summer and winter kids fishing events there in this very area we're talking about. And we typically, well, we had 43 um, two weeks ago uh, at an ice fishing mm -hmm. event. That's the biggest that we've had so far. But at, on the Sunday of Riverfest, and so that's at the end of July, we have a summer kids fishing derby and, and then on an ice fishing event. Uh, so we've been doing it um, twice a year in that area. People are gradually learning where it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's not signed or anything like that, so it's a little bit, a little bit of a challenge. But, but it, and by the way, having um, a uh, outdoor biffy at, uh, across the road um, at Corky's Pier, mm -hmm. you know, is really great. Uh, when it comes to ice fishing events, uh, most parents who are bringing kids to an event would like to know that there's an outhouse nearby. <laughs> if you ever notice in the advertising that I put in the paper or the rest for these events, I always mention there's an outhouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, otherwise we couldn't be serving cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, I think uh, your next item is, uh, is your next item goat grazing? Yep. It yep. Is, it, it, so maybe I'll just stick right her, stick Might her well around stay there, for that. Buck and yeah. Well, do, yeah, did we want to, um, oh, no, this is just an update, okay, we're good. There's no action on this no fishing action. pier thing no. uh, being requested. But I think we are gonna wanna, when we do it, go all the way from Corky's Pier, all the way to the dam, the little dam to, look at what might be done and included there in, in the future. Do we want to add the ability to have another fishing pier by Corky's Landing there? Or do we, you know, what else do we want to do down there? And how do we want to see it improved if it's going to be? Thanks, Buck. You're welcome. 
so the next item up is the, the changes that are, are being recommended to our ordinance to have goats. Did you want to talk first about the item that was dropped from the budget, Mr. Casanova, the uh, $12,000 this year to use goats to graze the uh, Prospect Park? I don't know if Tom wants to start that discussion or Pam does or something, yeah. but I'm here for that. that? Uh, well, um, this project where we would acquire um, Goats for buckthorn eradication was brought up and proposed in our 2018 budget. Um, it was moving along very well until uh, it hit a hurdle on one of the last meetings. Um, I think there's a lot of consensus that this is a, a, a very important project. And then after speaking with uh, some people from Tropical Wings organization, along with the fact that uh, this area where we're considering this buckthorn eradication is in one of our um, highly used parks, and it would actually enhance the, the park use and actually the visibility of a really great, some scenic views of the river mm -hmm. from up on Prospect, Prospect Park. Um, so we didn't give up on the idea. There's been a lot of people that have asked about it and inquired about it. And it seems as though there's there could be opportunities where we could get funding from other sources in our city operating budget. So in order to move forward with getting or acquiring or, or trying to get grants or donations, uh, we have to look at the current ordinance. Um, it talks a little, you know, I think it was addressed for um, some of the, uh, first there was the chickens, you know, that came in and then it was uh, last year, I think there was a local resident that had goats. And then so I think they, they adopted this ordinance for uh, keeping animals for other uh, weeds and invasive species. But I think we need to modify that if we would move forward with this eradication with the goats because uh, the proposal would be for a longer time that is in our ordinance. Um, yeah, they're requesting 50 days on the, on the one and our ordinance goes 30? Mm -hmm. Yes. 35 and 50 I think yeah. was in the proposal. So, so are I, you talking, are we talking about the fundraising, is it, I mean, is it fund, fundraising? People are working on, people, people are working on that now, but uh, for fundraising, yes. But I would hate to have funds donated and funds brought in and all of a sudden it hits a snag with, so, you know, someone could say, well, your ordinance, you're out of compliance with your current ordinance. I'd like to see if we can bring this forward to a council and get this changed to if, you know, whatever Catherine recommends as far as some verbiage that we could, already, okay. He sent over some recommendations, mm -hmm. so I guess let's just move to number eight then. We're, we're not gonna. Well, the, the ordinance that was uh, passed was probably it had in mind residential lots and, and probably worked just fine for small lots, you know, quarter of an acre, third of an acre, half an acre. But the um, area in Prospect Park, which was quoted by the so-called the Munch Bunch, the goat grazing people, is about seven and a half acres. And so it needs longer and it needs more goats. And so I took a look at the ordinance and I think Debbie made you some copies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you hand those out, Debbie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, I highlighted just adding a few words. It, uh, it looks like it was, you know, gray, a gray highlighter used. So it would just make it um, per acre or part thereof. And where manure is concentrated, then it would have to be spread out or trucked away. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but where, where goats uh, spread their droppings 
over a wide distribution, it's fertilizer and, and highly desirable. Yeah. So uh, no one would uh, want to haul that away unless it's concentrated, I thought. So I suggested these ch simple changes. If you like them, you could recommend them to the council by passing a motion to, uh, to do that and send it on to let them deal with it. Do we need to have Catherine take a look at this and then move it to council? Or? She does it uh, incident to the council's work, I think. When, when the issue paper is prepared for the common council at that stage, she usually looks at ordinances. A lot of times, ordinances. once she reviews them, she might call if she has any questions prior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to council. So I'll move to approve. Buck's changes to changes the ordinance. Changes that Buck has recommended. Then they'll become your changes. Yes. Mm -hmm. so the changes that are outlined in the information we receive from Buck. I'll second. And if if the once this is if this is true if adopted, then we you know if we would get enough funding for this, then at least we would uh, have the ordinance in place. Just put it back on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So everybody clear on what we're, we're voting on. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Now back to the funding. I think yeah. Pam kind of wanted to. Uh, to throw a little wider net here and maybe use this as a stepping off point for other things. This group called Tropical Wings is a 501c3, so it's a charitable nonprofit, and its mission is uh, facilitating the kinds of birds that winter in Central and Southern America and do their breeding up here, migratory birds in short. There are nearly 50 different species. Many of them are the pretty little warblers and things that we look forward to in the spring. Well, Prospect Park, because of its strategic location, is on their migratory route. You know, it's, it's a place which, if it has the right kind of vegetation, and, or they call it habitat, the tropical wings people call it habitat, then it's a great thing. The way it is now with buckthorn, it's a terrible thing. Buckthorn is cathartic to birds. When they ingest the berries, it goes right through them. Not only do they give them no food value, but it takes with it all the food that they've previously eaten that may be in their digestive tract, you know. So <coughs> buckthorn is bad news for migratory birds. Migratory birds are often on the um, ragged edge of survival simply from the fact of their migration. And it, there's been a fair amount on public television in the last year or two, so I guess we're all getting educated now. But they may sometimes fly a couple hundred miles at night. They arrive hungry, and if they don't find viable food within an hour or two, they may well expire, and that'd be the end of the trip. So a place like Prospect Park with its seven and a half acres of good habitat can be a wonderful thing. and so. When I mentioned to Patty Mueller of Tropical Wings, she's the president, uh, lives, lives on Chestnut here in the city, that, that if something needed to be done about to facilitate getting the goats in here to improve that thing, she was all for it. And, and allowed me to draw up these grant applications to the ro ro Daybreak Rotary and XL Energy um, in using Tropical Wings. So uh, we're kind of off to the races on that subject to getting the grants. Well, in your last uh, meeting, evidently, Pam Brokaw uh, volunteered to do some things with fundraising. So I've coordinated that with her. And she also wants to um, explore some other avenues. Did you want to talk about that? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we can talk about them together. We talked about the possibility of establishing some kind of a Friends of the Park Association. And as we've had other items that have, have come up, with parks that might be an opportunity to do some lifting in those arenas also. Um, and so I guess to get a, a, a feel for if there's interest in trying to establish something along those lines and what that looks like. Um, and then also trying to find other groups that we can partner with that work with environmental or sustainability or if they're there's a, a, if that's one of their pillars, mm -hmm. where, where, where can we build some relationships? And so I, I think that our thought is that it could go beyond 
the bringing goats to Prospect Park, but what are some other opportunities that we might have that would benefit our parks and communities? And so Buck has, has done a ton of work to get things going and to get the grants submitted. Um, and, and so I guess if folks have ideas, um, you know, we talked about maybe doing some kind of a, a walk or a, a, as a fundraiser, or could we do a, a adopt a goat or some kind of a, a ask letter to, and what is it, you know, what does that look like for us? But, you know, I guess what I'd like is a, a feel from the, the park board about establishing a friends of the park <coughs> type group and trying to move that forward. I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And it, it could draw from a number of sources for input that could help direct any number of things within us from urban forestry to the birds to you know projects for we've always got Eagle Scouts and, and the like coming forward wanting to do projects. I mean there's so many things that it, it could be applicable to um, for lack it just lack of effort and, and somebody to spearhead it mm -hmm. to want to do it. If you're willing to take that on, I think that's a, a fabulous thing myself. Well, I, I think that, you know, if there's support from this group, what we would probably do is look for a, a core group or some volunteers oh. that are willing to help it, help it move forward. Um, so I, I think that we have, uh, you know, if we've, <coughs> we've got support, then we can try and, and make those links or make those connections as to what's involved with, with establishing and are there other groups that exist that we can mirror. Mm -hmm. So whether it be the Friends of the, li the, the Library or some other organizations that exist yeah. and how can we m utilize some of their, their tactics or their, mm -hmm. the, the methods that they've put in place to help benefit the parks. Well, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Okay, well thank you. Pam has um, already uh, enlisted Angel Dorati at uh, um, Angel's Pet World to uh, head up a walk, if I understand it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's and Angel kind of gave her feedback that the uh, HIBA, Hudson Independent Business Association, which is mm -hmm. kind of a subset of the Chamber of Commerce, does a fall helping hands event where they do a fundraiser and they split the proceeds among five groups that they pick each year, nonprofits, mm -hmm. and um, uh, somewhere the idea came that Tropical <coughs> Wings maybe could be chosen as one of the five this year. Vicki will probably remember two years ago Sustain Hudson was, and last year Riverfest was. It amounted to about $1,000. And uh, so <laughs> she's, she's off with good ideas, it seems oh, like. That's great. And well, and, and I think, you know. Good blossom. That's right. Um, you know, if there are other ideas or if, if folks watching the telecast have ideas or would like to get involved, please touch base with the Parks Department and we will uh, post information about a preliminary meeting on what that looks like. Um, I think that getting volunteers to help move it forward will be key in, in, in making it successful. Um, and I guess creativity, you know, are there what are what are some opportunities if when we are able to bring the goats into the park could it serve as an educational opportunity for groups or you know what does that look like so um, we're excited to to get ideas and to be able to move it forward fantastic thank you buck for everything you've thank done. you very much buck buck can i ask one question i know you worked with uh brian elwood from excel and um, the Rotary timeline, I have to respond to the people. They have, you know, they kind of give me a date of March 1st to be commit, committed. Seems to me that we're probably looking at 2019. I mean, or do these grants or have to be used in the, this calendar year? And if that's the case, I don't know when some of these grants are due and how that would work if we have to commit you know, mm -hmm. soon to this people with the goats. 
Yeah, at your suggestion, I um, pursued those two, um, and I believe the grant, the application deadline with Excel is February 23rd. I uh, thought I'd sit down and start writing it tomorrow. The rotary one I already submitted. Yeah, it's been submitted. Yep. Actually, yep. Pat hand carried it to the <laughs> I committee. It in, but yeah. So, yep. Yeah. But uh, when they announce their decisions and when the money becomes available is not going to be March one. Um, I think the the daybreak rotary is decision making is in April, and uh, and the XL Energy <coughs> is in early summer, and the money is not available until later. Yeah. So even if we had yes answers, we'd have to figure out how to front the money. Now I have, once in my uh, life, I did borrow money from a bank after we had received the, um, the word that our grant was accepted. It was the Wisconsin Tourism Council. And, but even, even that's not gonna be by March 1. Um, so maybe it may be that we can't mobilize until 19, Very possible. Mm -hmm. which is bad news for those birds. But um, volunteers have been doing their best by hand, but that's, it's just terrible working on a slope like that, mm -hmm. and you can't accomplish much. I'll, I will speak with her and tell her that, you know, we have projects and donations, you know, or grants coming, but it'll probably be mid-summer before we know, late spring and early summer, and see what she says. I'll keep you posted, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Any items for future consideration or future business? Tom, you have anything to park updates that you want to go through beyond what we've already covered? Oh, just the vision plan is moving forward and we should have, you know, in the next few months, kind of a better um, concept plan. I, uh, unfortunately, the evening that the council meeting was uh, canceled two weeks ago on a Monday night, the two gentlemen, the two engineers, um, started their trek from Madison. <laughs> <laughs> and they, I, they actually did, it wasn't a total waste uh, trip. They met with uh, the DNR people, uh, I don't know if it was in Eau Claire, or they met in Baldwin, and they talked a lot about some of the permitting and things like that. And they did not hear that the meeting was canceled till they arrived in Hudson. And, oh. But my, Mike Johnson and myself met with them and we talked actually for a few hours. Um, so uh, we actually have to get a, you know, some kind of agreement that was um, to have them come up and present their uh, findings and some of their concept plans one more time to council. So that'll probably be in the near future. They also spoke to the fact that they believe that they can earn their weight, I think was the, the phrase they used at being able to get grant money to do a lot of the projects that they're proposing as, as part of their study. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes into play as, as well as to what they're talking of doing. But um, they covered from 94 all the way to St. Croix Street in meeting with landowners, with various stake owners who or stakeholders who utilize the river or utilize the parks or um, boaters, kayakers, fishermen. They tried to cover every group that, that they could to it. So it's going to be interesting to see what the, <coughs> their final proposals come back at. And then what's available for funding to, to bring any of them to fruition will be the task that would follow up on that then. Um, I do have a meeting set with some of the people from the sailing club, mm -hmm. sailing school. We're meeting Monday. So I don't know if the, you know, they're requesting some location down in um, Picnic Point. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, you know, it's going to uh, see exactly what they're looking for and what they need and if, 
if it's a temporary, you know, that's what they're talking is a temporary uh, one year agreement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until we get it further. Part of the, the plan that the, the engineers did is addressing if that, if the sailing school moves over to that part of the park, instead of the current form of riprap that's used as it moves out onto the, the point, they have these really nice pavers that, large pavers that step down that are uh, much more user friendly to mm -hmm. people trying to carry it in lots of sailboats, but also just the general public wanting access to the water. And I think it'll, their plan is, is to really try and, and make that whole end of the park as user friendly as to the river as, as we can. So it should be interesting to see what they come back with for it. But in the meantime, you know, we're going to have to, you know, we'll be working with the sailing school as, mm -hmm. you know, they, they talk about getting electricity, getting water. Uh, that seems a little more permanent to me than a one year deal. So uh, as I get information, I'll certainly bring that back to Park Board and okay. so we're going to have to make a decision shortly. I know they're going to lose their spot. Do they have yeah, one? That's right, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Any other business? If not, move to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll move. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We are adjourned. <laughs>